Hi, I'm Brian Hetrick. I'm the Greenhouse Manager at Hippocrates Health Institute in West Palm Beach, Florida, and we're here in the greenhouse. This is where the magic happens, and some people have told us that Hippocrates has the best, sweetest tasting wheatgrass juice in the world. So I'm going to share with you the top five ways to grow excellent wheatgrass. Number one, obviously you need good quality seeds. So the seeds that I'm using are red hard winter wheat berries. And we're going to germinate them first prior to planting. So I'm going to be using a sprouting vessel. You can use a sprout bag like this one. You can use the Easy Sprouter. Each one has its own pros and cons. I like the mason jar method. This is threaded to fit in place of the standard lid, only it has holes in it. So let's grow some wheatgrass, shall we? I'm gonna put one cup of red hard winter wheat berries into the mason jar, and then I'm going to soak for eight hours. Fresh filtered water, room temperature. After eight hours of soaking, I place the sprouting lid on, and then I simply drain the water off by inverting the jar. And then I leave the jar at a 45 degree angle in a dish rack, and I rinse three times, 12 hours apart. After three rinses, your seeds will be germinated and they'll be ready to plant. They'll have these tiny little white nubs off to one side. That's the root that's beginning to emerge from the shell. That's the perfect stage for planting. The next step is using potting mix in a tray that has holes in it. This way, the soil will drain properly. And so I'm going to add a half inch of organic potting mix. Just a thin layer of potting mix is all that's needed. And I'm evenly distributing the potting mix out to the four corners of the tray, breaking up any clumps. And then I want to lightly compress the soil. So I take a second tray, an empty one, place it on top, and using both hands, palms flat, fingers spread, I press down two ways, then I rotate the tray 90 degrees, press down again to create this nice, even seed starting mix with this cool waffle pattern to it. The next step is to moisten the surface of the soil. So using a misting bottle, I mist it heavy. You don't have to get the tray dripping at this point, you just want the surface of the soil well moistened. Now we're ready to plant. So my one cup of dry seeds that I started with will now have swollen to about a cup and a half. That's the perfect amount for a tray this size. And I'm lightly brushing the germinated seeds out to the four corners of the tray. I'm not pressing down into the soil and I'm not covering with any soil. So just a single layer thick, just so they're touching side by side, not piled one on top of each other. And then the next secret, very important, I'm going to mist again, mist it heavy, and then I cover with an empty tray, and I water twice a day for a total of seven days. And the cover tray is not needed anymore after day three. For watering, I'm going to use a sprout lid and I'm going to pour the water into the sprout lid, holding the lid just above the surface of the soil, moving the lid back and forth, side to side. This distributes the water so it does not disturb the seed bed. This is wheatgrass on day four, and now you can see that the roots have made their way into the bottom of the tray, and they're protected by the moisture in the soil. And this is wheatgrass on day seven and it's ready to harvest when it reaches the jointing stage. The jointing stage is a botanical term for when the plant is graduating from a baby to an adult. This is when it's the most nutritious and when it's the most tender and when it's the sweetest. And you harvest with a knife or a pair of scissors, you just cut above the soil line. The best place to grow is indoors in air conditioning. And the kitchen has the perfect light level. You want plenty of indirect sunlight and plenty of artificial light, full spectrum is better than conventional, but no direct sunlight ever for the baby plants. 
Here at Hippocrates, I teach weekly classes to the guests who are in the program on how to grow not only just wheatgrass, but a dozen different varieties of sprouts that we serve in the kitchen every day. And here we have some sunflower sprouts. And here we have some buckwheat sprouts. And these are pea sprouts. And I also teach how to grow leafy sprouts, including things like alfalfa and clover, broccoli, onion, garlic, cabbage, and beets, as well as beans and legume sprouts, atsuki beans, mung beans, red lentils, green lentils, French lentils, and fenugreek and garbanzo. So come to Hippocrates and learn how to grow the tastiest, most nutritious sprouts in the world.